Sometimes you bite off more than you can chew. Sometimes you get in too deep. Sometimes you overcommit yourself. Sometimes you get overextended. And sometimes you cannot accomplish the goals that you set out for yourself. And that's all right. That happens. And that's going to be the subject of this podcast. It's going to be sometimes you bite off more than you can chew. And what I mean by that is that is if you are out there, if you are out there pursuing your purpose, if you are out there fulfilling your goals, if you're doing what we, what you were designed to do and you're constantly seeking to push the boundaries, you're constantly seeking to break through barriers, to overcome obstacles, to see those challenges through to, to completion, you're going to run into problems. You're going to bite off more than you can chew. You're going to take on projects. You're going to take on relationships that overwhelm you. And you're going to fail. And that happens. And that's good. You know, especially if you're in any sort of job where you have to do projects or you have to serve clients, sometimes you're going to get in too deep. Your judgment is going to fail you. Your ambition and your zeal is going to get the better of your judgment. All right. And you're going to find out once you get into a project or once you get into a case or once you get into this or that or the other thing that it's more than you can handle, that it's too big and that you mis, uh, misjudge the situation. All right. So the question is, so what do you do then? What, what's, your, what's your move then? Well, the answer is very simple. You keep going. You keep going through to completion. You, you grind your way through it the best you can. You keep going to completion and you learn from the experience. You learn from the experience. You know, there's this myth out there that everybody thinks that they should somehow always calibrate their ambition with their abilities. Like you should always somehow be attuned to, um, you know, what your limits are at that moment. Well, that's how you find out what your limits are is you have to test them. You know, and you see this often in these very, very timid people that they don't want to take on a project or they don't want to take on a case or they don't want to do this or they don't want to um, uh, get into a relationship with a woman because they think that she's too much for them to handle. And so what happens is they always stay in this state of, of stasis, this state of stagnation, like those ponds that you see that have no fresh water going into them. They're just stagnant pools that are clo- that are clogged and filled with algae. And you don't want to be that. You do not want to be that. You need to be that bubbling brook, that, that's, that stream that is just slicing through rock and just slicing through the terrain, always making forward progress. Because that's really what makes the difference in the world. And that, that is really what enables growth. But, you know... It's painful when you take on something that's that's beyond your abilities at the time or you when you get in too deep, when you overcommit, when you bite off more than you can chew, you're going to choke. That's what biting off too much is all about. You choke. You choke. You're going to fuck things up. Mistakes are going to happen. The, the ball is going to get dropped. Bad things are going to happen. And at the time, you're going to be like, fuck, man, why did I do this? How did I, how did I get into this situation? How did I allow myself to be put in this situation where I'm overcommitted? And you're going to have the haters out there. You're going to have the, the dorks and the wimps and the pudwax snickering and laughing at you. But what they're really doing is they're, they're, they're laughing because they were looking for an excuse not to do anything. And they're going to use your discomfort and your failings as a justification for their own inaction and their own timidity. That's the reality. So fuck those people. Don't listen to them. You know, again, like I keep saying, if you are out there pursuing your purpose, if you are animated by that sense of purpose, if you're constantly, from the moment you get up in the morning, from the moment you... Uh, your feet hit the deck in the morning. You're pursuing your purpose. You're pursuing your grand designs. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have time for this bullshit. Okay, you're not gonna have time for the self doubt, for the worry, the the stress, the bullshit. You're gonna have to just grind through things. And very often during the course of that 
day during the course of that week or month or year, you're going to take on projects that you think maybe at first that are within your capability, but somehow you find out that they're not, that they are not. Nobody is superhuman. Nobody is uh, indestructible. Anybody can, uh, anybody can fail. It can happen at any time. So you have to learn to be comfortable, comfortable with, the, with the reality that sometimes not everything is going to go your way. You know, there is this myth out there that your life is supposed to be some sort of unimpeded trajectory that gently slopes upward in some asymptotic curve that just goes on and on and upward and upward forever. And we're all guilty of that. But it doesn't, doesn't work like that doesn't work like that. It's volatile. There are highs, there are lows, there are crashes. There's recuperation, there's consolidation, there's uh, uh, periods where nothing happens. All right. But if you truly are out there doing what you are designed to do, what your purpose tells you to do, you are going to make progress. And you know, along those lines, I want to read a little sentence here, a quote by the mystic uh, Sir Thomas Brown. And this is from his uh, essay, um, Religio Medici, Religion of a Doctor. He says, uh, this is section 12, he says, We term sleep a death, and yet it is waking that kills us and destroys those spirits that are the house of life. Tis indeed a part of life that best expresseth death, for every man truly lives so long as he acts his nature, or some way makes good the faculties of himself. Okay, now what is he saying there? Every man truly lives so long as he acts his nature. That's number one. That's the first thing. And the second thing he says at the beginning, the first part of the quote, we term sleep a death, and yet it is waking that kills us. So how that passage might be interpreted as... Many people that are out there walking around in a waking state are not really awake at all. They are shrouded by death. They are shrouded by by silence, by a stultifying sense of conformity, by a sense of oppression, by a smothering sense of torpor, of non-action. Those people that you see out there that are that have never grappled with their purpose. They've never tried to seek out their purpose. They've never had the courage to pursue their dreams, to do what they really want, to really, really push those boundaries and break through those obstacles and go forward. So those people, waking is in some ways like the sleep of death. Waking to them is like a state of zombiehood. And that's really what I see. That's really what what you see, I think, if you really are honest with yourself and you look at people uh, out there walking around. They're not alive. They're They're just not alive at all. So if you're out there and you're not asking for anything from people, you're not looking for handouts, you're not seeking to profit at others' expense, that's the true way. That's the way you achieve your goals. That's the way you stay true to your principles. You know, those people that are out there that you'll say that you'll that you'll you'll run into and they'll say, Oh, you're so lucky, you know, how did you ever you know, I really admire what you did and you're so lucky, you know, say, and you sit you, you just nod and think to yourself, Yeah, that's because, you know, while you were out there fucking off, while you were out there doing frivolous nonsense, you know, I was the one that was working. I was the one that was towing the line, I was the one that was suffering. Where were you? Where the fuck were you? You know, those are the thoughts that will go through your mind at that time. So, anyway, to get back to what I was I was uh, stating at the beginning, do not worry about failure. Do not worry about failing. You're going to get in too deep, and there are two types of biting off more than you can choose: professional and personal. Professional and personal. Professional biting off more than you can chew is when you take on a project or you take on a client or you take on a case that's just too much for you. You either you can't manage it, it's too much, the work is too hard, the, the knowledge, the, 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 the knowledge base that it requires is outside of what you can do. 
And what have you got to do? You got to do damage control. You better get through it because people are counting on you. There is no day off. There is no, oh, I don't, I don't feel like doing this. I don't know if I can do it. There is no backing out. You got it. You got the job. You better handle the job the best you can and deal with the consequences. You deal with it. That's what you have to do. You have to deal with it. You deal with it the best you can. Yesterday, I wrote an essay for my site. and It was on the Roman uh, medical procedures for extracting uh, projectiles in combat. And one of the techniques that Kelsus talks about is when you are trying to pull an arrow out of a wound and you find that the barbs in that arrow might damage the flesh on the way out, you got to snip them off. You reach in there with your forceps and you snip off the barbs. So that's what I say to you figuratively. Snip off the barbs and pull the arrow out. If you get into a case, if you get into a project, if you get into a situation where you are in over your head, you got to fucking gut, gut it through. It's a ball check. That's a ball check. You fucking better do it. You got the job. There is no, there is no, I, oh, I don't like it. I can't believe this is happening. What's going on? This is just so awful. What's going to happen? I don't, tough shit. Fuck face. It's your task. It's your job. You better handle it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You snip off the barbs with your forceps and you pull the arrow out and you suture it up and you keep going. And that's it. That's all you can do. And you learn the next time. You take it as a learning point. You take it as a, a lesson learned. So those are professional uh, examples of, of uh, professional getting in too deep or biting off more than you can chew. Personal, okay, let's say you want to get involved. This you, you see a girl that you like or someone you want to have a relationship with and you find out you get into you get into it and she's more than you can handle and let's face it every guy likes to talk tough every guy likes to say oh you know i can handle this i can let's face it you know there are some girls that are just that are just beyond our ability to control or to handle you know women for men are almost like there's a complementarity that needs to be there they need to complement each other and if a girl is in a entirely different point of view, frame of reference, a different uh, operating on under uh, operating on a whole other other plane, that's not your gig. Then that's going to be someone that you can't handle. That's going to and again, it's not. I'm not saying that anybody's quote out of your league. It's not. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a whole, moving in moving in entirely different circles. And you don't want to be around people like that because those are those are people those are girls that are not meant for you, they're not they're not for you, you know someone that comes from a, a very different socioeconomic class that has a very different life experience that has a very different cultural frame of reference. These are people sometimes that you can find uh, very difficult to find common ground with. That people that aren't suited for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody's going to be suited for you. And you know, it's not just it's not just women, uh, girlfriends. It also is true with with male friends at all. Uh, um, you know, just comrades, male friends. Same thing. You are not going to connect with everybody. You are not going to connect with everybody. And you may find out that some people that you thought you had something in common with, you will find out eventually that you did not. And in that situation, there is nothing wrong with moving on. There is nothing wrong with disengaging, taking it as a teaching point and moving on with life. Nothing wrong with that at all. So do not, do not fall into the trap of thinking that you are infallible and that you are always expected to make the right decisions. You're not. You're not going to make the right. You're going to fuck up. Things are going to happen. And you shouldn't feel bad about that. You should not feel morose about that. And what prompted this podcast was, you know, sometimes I get emails from guys and they say things like, I can't believe I, I was such a fool. I made a mistake. I, I did this. I got in too deep. I did this. And I want to tell these guys, look, hey, this is why it's called life. This is this is life. This is why it's called life is because you are going to make mistakes. Fuck ups are going to happen. You are going to choke. You're going to take on more than you can handle. It's normal. It's natural. It happens. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Shake it off. Dust yourself off and move on. All right. That's all for today. Go get them.